So good evening everyone, uh, my name is Alex Mackey. Um, I'm going to be talking about the Navigation Timing API. Um, it's not as shit as it sounds. Let's begin. Um, I did quite a lot of consultancy work. Um, we're looking at why various people's uh, sites are slow. Um, normally when we start off looking at a site, um, the customer has this in mind, in that they've got a very simple web page um, and it's calling a couple of services, maybe it's calling a database in order to go and pull some information in. Um, normally when we actually go and take a closer look at what they're doing and why their site's slow, um, it looks something a bit more like this. Um, and I think of a lot of sort of performance work, uh, we can really divide it into the highly technical names of server-side stuff and client-side stuff, um, where the actual word lag is during the page. So the vast majority um, of uh, cases, um, it will actually be the server-side that's causing your page to be slow. Um, tonight, what I want to talk about is actually looking at um, once you've gone beyond that, what I'm going to loosely term the uh, client side. So what's uh, your JavaScript um, making So Maybe your CSS, maybe the actual elements you've added to the page. Um, but why should we actually do this if we can get you know, our, the biggest bang for our buck out of actually optimizing some of the server side of things? Well, there's actually a number of different studies done by some quite large organizations where they deliberately introduced a delay into their web pages of between um, about 100 and 400 milliseconds. And they actually found some quite surprising things where they would get customers, um, vastly reduced number of uh, customers and sales. The traffic would increase or decrease depending on if they played around with this deliberately introduced delay. So it seems um, as if human beings, even though these fractional sort of points of uh, loading time, we can actually notice these. So if we can notice these, we really want to be doing everything we can to go and optimize our site. Um, I even came across one study um, which actually found that uh, slow site can actually give your users higher blood pressure. So by writing crappy websites, you're actually killing some of your users <laughs> potentially. Um, the other use um, is this for uh, this type of thing is for actually looking at performance on mobile devices. Um, it's a very different landscape. Um, unfortunately, uh, it's only some of the latest uh, sort of Android stuff this is supported in, but hopefully it'll come to all devices later on. So when you're doing any performance work, uh, what you actually want to do, first of all, is just create a benchmark, measure what your site is currently, otherwise you're not going to know if any improvements you make um, are actually making things worse. So how do we actually go about measuring it? Well, a naive approach um, is actually to use the JavaScript uh, timer, um, maybe like this guy and uh, his saw there. So what a lot of people will do is they'll create a, uh, they'll just record the current time, um, and then down the end of the page or on the on load event, they'll actually deduct that from the start of the time. Um, and then take this as the difference. Um, this doesn't actually work so well, unfortunately, and it turns out that by introducing this extra script on the page, you're actually affecting the page, and you can't measure some of the things um, actually on the page, such as network latency conditions. Um, the timers in JavaScript are not that accurate. They're actually not required to be, um, and some quite interesting links at the end um, regarding this. So what are you actually going to do? Well, in uh, HTML5, um, slightly before, um, we have this navigation timing API. And this gives you a lot more information about these type of things. So you can actually analyze what's going on with your page um, and how this might affect it. Um, there's really quite a detailed information here. What it basically gives you is uh, it calls it a monotonic clock, um, which is basically just a number that goes up um, rather than an actual two dates. Um, dates obviously introduce some complications when we're doing these type of things. Um, very easy to use, and it's very well supported, um, even in uh, later versions of IE here. How do you actually uh, use it? Well, all you do is you go and grab hold of this Windows.performance timing object. Uh, you get this nice uh, object like that. Um, and then uh, you can actually just play around and put in uh, some of the events like that. So I've got uh, Chrome open um, here. Um, I've just, uh, in the console here, queried uh, all the events here. And actually, by deducting some of these, I can get some quite interesting uh, performance information as I go into um, that there. Some of the browsers will actually give you even a little bit more than this. Um, you might have a little bit of memory uh, information there as well. Um, Internet Explorer, obviously Microsoft couldn't uh, keep to the standards. Um, they've actually introduced some uh, further uh, information such as the time the page takes to render and stuff. So it's very easy to use. It can give you a bit of information about your page. Um, so please use this method. So in summary, does appear that people do notice these small differences, and particularly in um, a group of uh, you guys where I'd imagine a lot of you are concerned with front end, um, it really does make a difference the stuff you're doing as well. That's not to say you should go and ignore some of the stuff happening behind the scenes, 
um, but it does make a difference. Don't use JavaScript timing uh, timers. Do use the navigation API, um, and potentially you can kill your users with a crappy website. Thank you very much. Uh, great stuff, Alex.